Okay, Bucks and Mares, we're going to head down the main hallway. See if we can get some distance covered before they spot us. Move it! Pushing my exhaustion to the back of my mind, I galloped toward the largest corridor again. The sounds of hooves clattering on the ground through the audio recorder sounded like they surrounded me, only faded and hissing with poor sound quality. The darkness ahead parted as my pitbuck's light reached it, creating a little island of visibility around me that provided the only warnings of any obstacles. Hey, every pony, don't activate your eyes forward sparkle. They'll pick it up on their security terminals if you do. We'll just navigate manually. Left! The rushing sounds shifted, harder strikes as the dozen ponies rounded. Without even thinking, I copied them, finding myself darting around a sharp bend of the stable layout. This could work! And remember to... Ah! I tripped, falling head over hooves as something collided with my front legs. Uh, who the hell left a scooter here? Hey, Tulip Bloom, what do you think you're doing riding around here? I'm sorry, sir. No, don't stop for your scooter. Just leave it. Go now. Keep going, every pony. Wanting to nurse my bruised leg, instead, I fought to get back on my hooves and gallop onwards and into the dark once again. Corridors passed on either side. Was I hearing it properly? Had they turned? Right! But there was no right! The dull rattling of metal gears shook the corridor, before that tortured grinding that every single door in here made picked up. Almost invisible on the gray walls, the door slid open as I ran directly at the wall, before slamming shut behind me. I was definitely in new territory now. This place seemed cleaner, more preserved. Perhaps the water hadn't leaked in here? Come on, every pony, Keep up! A thick clang sounded in the recording. A few seconds later, my own hoof struck a loose panel that made an identical sound. I was falling behind! Praying to my hooves to move faster, I sprinted as fast as I could to catch up. Sculpty! Are we doing the right thing? We're not going to hurt any pony, but they won't listen to reason anymore. We have to intimidate them somehow into telling us what they're up to. Parts of the stable are starting to act weird after they got involved. Left. There was a left ten feet back the way. Had I overshot it? Right. No, no, no. They were getting ahead. Wait for me! I screamed as I turned and galloped back and around the corner. There were three or four right-hand turns to choose from that I could run past. Was I lost? Crap, Sculpty. Gloomy's fallen behind. That battle saddle's weighing him down. Oh, for... We're down the second right, Gloomy. Hurry up! I'm coming! I shouted in response. Without hesitation, I dove into the corridor and immediately fell down a short flight of steps. Shouting out in pain as I struck the ground, I tumbled and rolled into the next corner's wall, below a window, curling up before the bone-rattling impact. Staggering and woozy, my balance was utterly shot from the impact. The darkness seemed to blur and shift in my dizzied vision. Shapes moved and flowed back and forth like... like the group of ponies I was following. A clammy sweat broke over me as I realized I couldn't remember the way back up from here. I was entirely at the mercy and direction of the past. Hey! What are you lot doing? A new voice, educated and refined. Shit! Grab him! Wait, what? Get off me! Get off! The sound of cans and tins crashing to the floor rattled around the stable. They skidded across the floor away from my hooves as I trotted unsteadily into some sort of medical bay. Dented trays were strewn around my feet. My own hooves were clattering through them, even as the same sounds echoed from the recorder. He might warn them. Gloomy. Take out that camera before they spot us. Some pony grab him. Hold him down. A gunshot rang out, and I covered my ear as the sudden boost in volume and static made it ache. Above me, I spotted a broken camera hanging by a wire from the wall. Lock him in the storage unit. We'll come and set him free later on. Don't panic, but we can't risk you doing- You have guns! What are you doing? We- We aren't dangerous! That's all we want to check, sir. Now please, get in, and we'll come back for you. A thick metal door stood locked ahead of me. Placing my hooves on it, I felt how securely it was rusted into place. Please! I... I don't like confined spaces! No! No! The lock descended with a stark clunking sound. Even as I felt the orange and brown lock, it occurred to me that they had never been able to get back to him. 
Whatever killed the stable was likely on this recording. Let's keep going. We'll head to the memorial room and cut through the back passage. The cameras they installed don't cover that way until right at the end. There was only one way to go. I waited for the group to move off before joining them. It took me a few seconds to realize that I'd drawn my empty BB pistol in my mouth without even knowing, as though I was with them. Running with the ghosts of the past to try and save the stable that had already died long ago. More voices broke into the recording. No. Lots. Around me, the stable opened out into a giant room, much like the atrium. I couldn't help but wonder in awe. How large was this place if I hadn't even found the science levels yet? Looming giants towered in the dark ahead of me, massively thick and tall pillars reflecting only vague light from their distinctly non-metallic surfaces. The green of my pit buck revealed them on all sides. Every pony, stop working and get to your rooms. Just stay down and quiet until we give the all clear. Shouts and stamping in all directions echoed off the walls from my pit buck giving the sensation of the noise existing in all areas of the room. Tramping across the oddly soft floor, it finally occurred to me what the tall objects were. Trees. Giant indoor trees, thick with frozen sap and rotted wood from years of neglect and starvation in the dark. The ground below me was thick with dirt, loose and dry like the crater. Small, round, and rotten objects bumped against my hooves or squished with a thick, gooey green substance if I stood on one apples. This was where they had grown food. An underground... what were they called? Orchard? Or Chand? Sounds from the recording drifted between the trees and off the walls as I heard ponies dropping the baskets that lay around me. Hard bucks to grab what they could shook the area. Momentarily curious, I gave one tree a half buck, before screaming as my hoof became trapped in the rotten wood. Pulling desperately, I fell out of it, atop a basket full of rotten apples, catapulting it up to land right on top of me. Feeling something runny and bits of goopy apple collapse all around my head, I was suddenly very appreciative of my goggles. Shaking off the revulsion, I threw it off, almost slipping on the residue all over the loose dirt. Shivering with the slimy rotten mold covering my body and head, I staggered back against a tree, shaking myself clean or rubbing myself against it to clean the worst of it off. All right, Sculpt. I think that's every pony out of here. Why did you send them away if we aren't going to actually shoot anyways? Hell, I don't think I even grabbed ammo. We don't know what those scientists have cooked up, Runner Bean. I just want every pony to be safe. That stable tech mantra's still going, eh? Always. I might have felt proud of Sculpt to have such a noble intention, but really, I was spending most of my time trying not to throw up. Now that I had something in me to throw up, it seemed to be relishing the opportunity after the vile apples had coated my body. Even that was just trying to distract me from these giant crooked dead husks that once were trees. Standing in the middle of the wide room, I realized that the walls were too far away to see in the dark. For all I knew, I was standing in a dark haunted forest outside. The feeling of displacement grew, an oddly open space within an enclosed area. Conflicting thoughts of being outside were mangled with the reminders that this dark place was still under... How much of a mountain now? Shaking my head and whimpering, I immediately ran forward to catch up with the recording. For a horrifying few seconds, no walls appeared. Only more trees. I had been in a stable, but now I was in a forest at night. Was I even going the right way? There's the memorial room, the far end. Let's go. I don't think we have much time left before word gets out. Wait, the living areas are just beyond it. If we rush right in, we'll be trying to get to the staircases with every stable resident in the way. Give them some time. Take out any cameras near the main exit. Make them think we're going that way, if they've even realized. Then get into the memorial room and bunker down for a few minutes. You're the boss. No, I'm just a concerned pony. This will turn out right, Bean, I promise. Now every pony rest a minute or two, but don't make much noise. We don't know who may overhear. I'm gonna go check on every pony. The recording seemed to pause, but I could still hear ambient noises in the background of ponies settling down in the dirt, chomping on apples. I ceased my galloping, as a lack of direction took over. I didn't want to run off before they moved on. Wandering back and forth, I discovered there were actually multiple orchards in this underground forest, divided by large rectangular openings. 
Around the edges were overgrown walls and the occasional jammed door. They were barely visible, only if I were right under it and shining my pit buck upwards. Settling down next to a tree on all fours, I sighed. I'd lost my direction again. Hopefully my perception of the far end was the same as the recording. I tried to imagine all the concerned ponies around me, clutching their weapons as they grabbed the occasional apple. I could hear a couple murmuring to one another nearby, the thump of some pony bucking apples from trees, and occasional nervous clicks of weapons. Part of me wished I could see them, see my ghostly companions on the quest to discover just what was going on in this stable. The thought stopped me. When had I become interested in finding out about the past? It always scared me. So why was there this strange feeling of... Something cantered between the trees. Hiding behind the tree in a heartbeat, I fought to stop myself whimpering and I poked my goggled eyes around to watch. It was in the trees, in the same room as me. It was right here. Moving and grazing, the blurry shape drifted between trees and flowed around bends. All sound seemed to deaden. The recording lost volume, gradually being replaced by a warping static that drowned out the normal audio. The closer it came, the greater the distortion. Like black wind, it whisked around into each tree in turn, never a single clear shape, bouncing from darkness and bending in as though it was a living shadow. Then it disappeared. Had it really? Where was it now? Every part of my mind screamed otherwise. It had to still be here. I moved out from the tree, glancing to either side and shining my pitbuck light. Each one of my legs was shaking so hard that I could feel my whipcord-tied pitbuck sliding down to my hoof. Drips of sweat from an oddly humid atmosphere poured off of me. The thunk of something striking wood reached my ears. <coughs> Squeaking, I dove behind another tree crouching behind the thick roots as a sudden wooden sound clopped down through the forest. Ahead of me, a tree swung lightly back and forth. It was there. Like a dark smudge on my goggles, it circled the tree. That pony-shaped head reared up, looking around. Run, Murky. My mind was bucking at my own brain to obey. Turn off your light! But I couldn't move my hoof. The shape drifted closer to the ground, moving to another tree. I was in clear view. Murky, run! But I was frozen in place. Moving steadily closer, the head turned, watching me across the forest. There were no eyes, just the silhouette of a pony against the lesser black around it. Gradually, almost anticlimactically, it drifted further away and disappeared through another rectangular door to the next apple tree facility. I couldn't take my eyes off the doorway. I worried that if I blinked, it would suddenly come back. What if it came up behind me when I moved on? Gradually, tree to tree, I shuffled and scooted forward, using every ounce of ability to sneak that I knew to get close to the door it had gone through. I needed to see that it had properly disappeared. Peeking around the edge, there was nothing but another rotten grouping of trees a few feet into the next section. There was such pitch darkness that I simply couldn't see any further past the first few feet. My world was nothing but a small radius around me. The feeling of vulnerability was really beginning to set in. The pit buck was still flickering, too. Sometimes I felt it was my only source of life, too. The pit buck died briefly. It flew past me into my room, so close that all I saw was a shifting of darkness so subtle that only my fear-ridden nerves spotted it. I screamed, falling back, my hooves flew up to try and ward it away. At my cry, it rounded off. A pony's vague shape appearing, eyes staring for a brief second before my own closed. The pit buck screamed in static, hooves flailing to try and get purchase. I bumped and fell a few more feet. I lay there and watched it go, with another thunk. A second tree shook, then another further away, and two more in the distance, beyond my vision. Then silence. I had to pull my goggles off to rub my eyes dry. Even as the static from the pipbuck gradually died down, I just kept shaking and shivering against the wall. Even as some more sounds of faded tree hits echoed lightly through the orchard, before dying off completely again. Right, ready?
far side, we're off. Let's get to the memorial room and move on from there. I didn't want to move. Hey, Gloomy, what's wrong? The sound washed in faded static at the response. I didn't want to move. So scared. I was so scared. We're all scared, Gloomy, but we're all here for you. We'll find out what's going on down there. Then we'll go back to a better life. Just stay with me, okay? Getting to my hooves, something about Sculpt's voice was reassuring. A teacher by trade, his words held great poise, almost fatherly. Something I'd never known. One step after another, Gloomy. That's all any of us can do. Warily glancing around at the dead trees and black mist, I began to trot towards the far end of the forest. That's it. Now let's go.